Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to my channel, Watch Time LA. Hello folks and welcome to another episode of Watch Time LA. This episode is going to be a full review on the new Timex 40mm Marlin. It is selling currently only on the Timex website for $250. I think they're picking up the shipping if I remember correctly. Uh, as I stated in my last video, uh, the shipping is expected to be very slow. It took uh, 8 to 12 days to come 50 miles from its original destination. Uh, before we go any further, I want to point out that if you like this video, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. That's what keeps me going and keeps this channel going. Appreciate your support. Hit a thousand uh, subscribers a couple of months ago and I could have done that without all of your support. So I appreciate it. Now moving on to this video, you see four watches here and three of them are Timex. I can tell you over my lifetime, over my 60 plus years, that Timex has spent more time on my wrist than any other watch. And I'm not talking about by small percentages, I'm talking about by decades. So I, going back to the 70s, or actually maybe even before when I was a kid, this was one of the most popular watches back in the day. As soon as the quartz thing hit, this little tiny Timex was what I remember my dad wearing and then ultimately me wearing. This little tiny, tiny thing that probably weighs, uh, I don't know, a few, 20, 30 grams. Takes a regular, uh, I think it's a, a 377 alkaline battery is what they had in them originally. And uh, of course, you know, there's the argument about alkaline versus others, and the alkalines leak and the others don't. That's BS. I've seen every kind of battery leak if they're in the wrong conditions for the right amount of time. Look how pretty that thing is, though. I'm going to show you another Timex watch here that was a hybrid. This watch was a hybrid between a quartz watch and a mechanical watch. I want you to watch how the second hand moves. This watch has a battery, a very large battery that uh, the case actually, so large that the case actually holds it in place. That's where the back of the battery sits. And it has a mechanical movement, balance wheel. So it has a quartz timer instead of an escapement and the balance wheel just goes back and forth and there's a little electrical device that hooks up to the balance wheel and makes it go back and forth. It's actually ingenious. I'm going to do an entire review on one of these. It's called the Timex Electric. You can find these on eBay. In fact, I have, I don't know, a half a dozen of them. And you can find them for pennies, really. And I restore them like everything else. And I got this one running perfectly. Not my first choice as far as wearing it, but I can tell you something. This is one of the finest specimens you'll see of that watch anywhere. It is almost flawless and it is decades old. Now, if you can tell by the profile, the cushion case, and mostly the gold, that this is a early, uh, very early adopter of the quartz functions in the late 70s. Very cool watch. Everybody should have one of these. This is a very important watch in watchmaking, in the whole watchmaking world, and it really doesn't get enough, enough time and enough press. As far as this, you know, these were the throwaways back in the day. I remember my dad always doing this, could get his watch going because they were only mechanical wine. There was no automatic watches. And as soon as people got rid of those watches, boy, they were jumping on these like crazy. Men got these, a lot of women got those little tiny uh, bolivas that were like this, this big. I don't know how you could see them, but they sold like crazy. But the reason they picked out these four watches is because of the nostalgia. 
and the new Timex Marlin. Now Timex came out with a 34 millimeter of this version. This is the 40 millimeter, not too long ago. And it was selling for well over a hundred bucks, but it was too small. It was, uh, in fact, I think it was smaller than this one. And although I have some pretty small watches and I still wear them time to time, I really don't, when I reach for a watch, I, I, I mostly bypass them, even this one. Although I, wear, I might wear this around the house every once in a while just because, hey, what the hell. These watches all are supposed to be retro. These live retro because they actually are. These are t period pieces. These two were meant to be contemporary, larger size, although this is a fairly good size if you look at it compared to some of these others. Um, these are supposed to be retro throwback watches that make you go, wow. I really miss that. Or for the younger generation, wanting something that was retro. They've come up with the Timex Marlin was the answer, and uh, Orient came out with the, the Orient Bambino a couple of years ago, and it was a big hit. So Timex came out with the Marlin. I think they, you know, I'm the one of the ones who said, hey, if Timex ever comes out with an automatic watch that was contemporary, although still retro, I'd be the first one in line to buy it. However, I was not prepared for the $250 price range, but I still, true to my word, to myself, I bought it. And this is it, the Timex Marlin. Now they sell it in with a brown dial and with the gold plating and with a, and with a gold plating with a black band. So there's all those different combinations. I don't know, the half a dozen different combinations. But I don't particularly care for buying any new watches that have any type of plating on them, uh, PVD or otherwise, because it just scratches and it comes off. Uh, this, however, was my choice because it actually has a polished stainless steel case. Uh, I bought a Timex not too long ago, the MK1. That one came as a stainless steel case, but of course they put a PVD coating on it and God only knows why. Uh, you can take a look right here and I'll put the link to that video. Uh, and then we have the Orient Bambino. I remember when I opened this box on my video. And if we wait a second here, I will also include that link right here. And you will see my reaction when I open the box on this. This watch feels solid. The case feels solid. It has a nice funk to it. It has a screwed down case back and it has a fully automatic winding and hacking movement. But I'm not gonna bore you with that right now because this video is already on my site. When I first opened the box on this, you will see my reaction right here. I had not opened the box before and I was kind of like, wow, it does look kind of cool, but is it kind of not blowing, it's not really blowing me away or anything. Band is nice enough. We're gonna get really in depth on this thing. Sunburst dial is nice enough. Does it, it make, make for a good dress watch under a shirt for sure. But what is the value of this watch? It doesn't really look retro. This would make it look retro or using the old numbers that they used to use would make it look retro. But all they did here is, you know, a couple of plain old indices. And I get it, this is from the 80s, but is that what they were going for? I thought they were going for a period much before that, the 50s, the 60s. I don't know if they captured that here. The other issue is it has one of the noisiest movements I have ever seen. Um, let me do this here. And, and you can't pick it up without hearing the movement. There's no way you can touch it or pick it up without hearing the movement. It's very, very, very annoying. That's all I gotta say. And then watch the rotor. It only winds in one direction, as you see. The other way, it just keeps spinning. Every time you move your hand, and it gets in that loop. It just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. And you could hear it doing that. And 
mean, I don't know whether it's because of tolerances close or far, but it's kind of loose. When you do this, you can hear it rattling around like crazy. Now, I know that this movement is co common to do that. I, I know that, um, but did they pick the right movement here? So they picked this movement, the Myota 8215, which is the base of the base of the base of all automatic movements. Because I repair watches and sometimes I'm looking for movements online. I found this for $35. I'm sure if I looked, I could find it cheaper. Certainly more expensive than a quartz watch, which you can buy sometimes for seven or eight dollars, the movements. If they bought these in bulk, which I assume that they did, they probably got them for 10 bucks or 15 bucks or something like that. On the positive side, I love the case design, although it makes it very thick. I'll get into the measurements in a little bit. And because the lugs are so short, it makes it wear really well. Even though it's a 40 millimeter, it wears much, much, much smaller. On the downside, it's very hollow and tinny sounding. Like I said, some of this noise that you hear when I'm tapping the watch is the movement rattling around inside it. You cannot move your arm without hearing this movement. And I can't hear anything. So I know I'm sounding like I'm blowing this thing up and maybe I am a little bit, but again, I'm trying to talk about value and did they capture what they were going after? Did they capture a real timepiece watch for the price and for the value? I'll save my final opinion on that for the end. However, you might already have a hint. It looks like it's probably assembled in China. If you look at it real close there, it says movement in Japan, move in Japan, strapped from China. It is a Timex branded, genuine leather strap. It has a signed Timex buckle and the case and the crown are not signed. The case back simply says stainless steel. There is a model number right there. The model numbers, by the way, they change a couple of the letters in the middle there, which designates the, I think it's the combination between the case and the band. They have several different models. Of course, the bands are easy enough to change. Obviously, it has a display back and it says it is water resistant to 30 meters. I don't know what you call the shape of this case. Oh, by the way, it has a, a screw down case back as well as a display case. Now the rotor on it looks like they just replaced the rotor with a Timex branded rotor and you can see it winding there or if you'd rather see that other deal. That's Look at that. Look how long that goes. You could hear that, guys. The movement is obviously working. And it's just plain. I mean, if I took the Timex name off of this, and that's all, that's all I did, would you know this was what they were trying to do here? That's really the question. If I took the Timex name off of this, would you know what they were trying to do? They were trying to satisfy a need. They're trying to get back in the automotive. Uh, uh, automotive. They were trying to get back in the automatic watch business and this is what they came up with. This is their big foray into the contemporary automatic watch business. The date right there, you see, is kind of tiny. Let's see how the thing works. I want you to watch the second hand when I adjust the time. I want you to watch now the minute hand as it skips back and forth it has some sort of uh, drag on it. It feels okay. I mean, and, and the, the detents are good, so you don't have to screw around trying to find the, the, uh, the date stop, the date detent. However, as you can see, it's not hackable. It just keeps on spinning. The finish on the crown, I'll do a close up later, not not so good. It almost looks like it's like a nickel plated piece of cast something. I'm not really sure what it is. And like I said, the whole thing 
has this real teeny effect. Let's do some math. What is this band worth? Is it, it's a made in China band. I get made in China bands directly from China for about leather bands for about three bucks. I'm going to say this is twice to three times as good as that. So let's call it 10. You got a movement they probably paid $15 for. And the case, although it's bulky, is extremely thin. And I'll prove that out when I weigh it here in a little bit. So the question is value wise, is this 250 bucks? I don't know. Let's do some close ups. Okay, I apologize about the little squiggly lines on my monitor. I don't know why it does that sometimes, but I can't seem to get it out. I've tried rebooting and all that stuff. But you guys get what, I'm, what you see in here, right? And I'm also going to be messing with the exposure on this a little bit to make it lighter and darker. Uh, anytime you have a domed crystal like this, especially a plastic crystal, you get all these reflections. So I apologize about that as well. But anyway, the first thing we see is Timex. Uh, it is painted on there. And you can see that the paint job, <laughs> okay, I gotta zoom in on this. Okay, so you might see that they, they did blob some paint on here. And I gotta tell you that out of all the watches I reviewed recently, that is the absolute worst paint job. And I don't know if they were going for that. Um, it certainly doesn't look like that on their vintage watch, the real vintage watch, but that's, that's what we got there. So, and then as we zoom back out again okay now that we're zoomed back out we're going to take a look at the hands i'm gonna to have to move the watch around and because of the dome crystal i'm gonna to have to mess with uh white balance and such and focus and all kinds of crazy things going on here okay there's the tip of the hand there's some very nice pencil hands uh they've done okay uh if you look down here and unfortunately i don't know if we're going to be able to see it so the hand, that one hand is not finished well. I don't know what happened in the plating. The other two, because I've already looked at this, the other two are, are fine. Uh, they didn't have the same issues. And we're going to look at the automatic painted. That's painted on fine, no problem. And the indices. So we have this contoured, or I think they call it camber dial. You see it kind of going off the edge of the earth there. Let me see if I can focus in a little bit. The indices are just very plain. They're little pencils themselves. And the minor indices are obviously painted on. There's your date. You gotta focus on that. The glare is just killing this video. I apologize again. But if it had, let's say, a domed sapphire crystal for $250, this glare wouldn't be there. And we'd be able to see this perfectly. This is the crown that we're looking at now. Okay, now we finally got a good picture. So there's your crown. It just looks like something that was cast and plated. Let's look at the case. Now this is polished, it's not a plated case, at least that's what they say. And I have no complaints whatsoever about how the case is finished. I just don't. There are some machine marks on some of the on, on the lugs in some places. Again, we're not we're not looking at a you know a ten thousand dollar Rolex, but there is definitely machine marks as you see when it, when it comes in right here. I never wore this watch. I never put it on my wrist except for one time when I did the first video, and I didn't wear it after that. So there's a little couple of little pop marks and machine marks as you go around it. Let's spin it over. And here, you know, it obviously says 21 joules. It says movement Japan, strap China. There's some of the gears in there. Here is our rotor. And more white balance nonsense today. And Timex is etched in there somehow. It's an unadjusted movement. It says 21 joules again. Myota Company. It does actually say Myota on there. Sometimes I take the back off, but I'm not going to do that in this case, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. The machining on the parts. 
what you would expect, you know, no, no different than uh, if I pop this, I'm wearing a Seiko right now. If I pop the Seiko automatic, it, it's, it's about the same as far as the finishing goes. Let's see if we can get the rotor to spin. There it goes. That's the rotor spinning. That's what you're seeing right now. And like I said, with every turn of that rotor, is a that you can see. Now when it's doing that spinning, it's not, absolutely not winding. That's the freewheel part. The screw here, there's your, there's a screw. And that's not a fault of Timex, you know, that's my, this is a Myota movement. And that's how they make them. This is the base, base model uh, Myota movement. So what else are we going to look at here? We're going to look at the case back real quick. That was machined fine. We're going to take a look at the lugs again. And uh, I'm going to adjust the white balance for like the millionth time here. Okay. There are the lugs. I am going to make sure that there is no dust on this because that would be very unfair. So uh, let me pause this. Okay, we're looking here is, is one of the lugs. Uh, I, I cleaned this off. There is absolutely no dust or dirt on that area. You will see uh, machine marks all over here and all over here on the backs of the lugs. You even see this line back here. That's a machine mark. And then they polished it, but they didn't polish it deep enough to get these, di these uh, little divots out and uh, some of the machining marks, even around the edge here. And here's a shot of our escapement and balance wheel. Now, I, I've purposely focused down here. That's why this looks a little out of focus. Uh, this is on minutely on different planes, so you have to catch it just right. Uh, they, when they talk about jewels, they talk about anything here that's a friction point. Uh, that's a jewel. They have two jewels on the escapement, and there's your balance wheel. I'll try very subtly to see if I can get different angles on here. There, it, now, now you see coming into focus is the spring. And at the very top now is in focus. That's the jewel. And it has 21 jewels. Unlike you or me. That's it for our close-ups. Okay, time for our measurements corner. We're going to weigh this thing now. It's uh, 54 grams. It measures 40 millimeters. Look at that. I've never seen that before. On that dot, 40 thickness. These are plastic, by the way. It won't hurt anything. 13 solid, right? Uh, lug to lug. You'll see this is pretty small. 47. And band width is 19, so it's a 20 millimeter. It's always a little bit small, so you can fit the actual band in there. Does not have any quick releases. That's about it. Well, let's do a measurement with the crown. I didn't do that. 40, 42 and a half. So it's a two and a half millimeter crown. And the crown itself, for anyone who wants to know this for whatever reason, is six millimeters. That's about it for size. I just want to do a quick comparison. Now, when we measured this a minute ago, uh, it said 54. I want to measure the, the Orient Bambino, which is the closest watch I have to compare it to. It's 66, so it's almost, you know, I don't know, 20% heavier? And you can feel it. I mean, you, you hold these two watches, and there's no question that you can feel the difference in weight. Absolutely no question. Comparing a couple of other things, this thing makes some noise, but it, I don't know how to explain it. This makes noise like there was a rock inside it if you shake it hard enough. This makes noise like there's a bunch of little uh, springs in it just bouncing around. Um, I don't know, like I said, I, don't, I just don't know how else to explain that. And here's a couple of neat things about this watch. Watch this. Watch what happens to the second hand when I wrap it. Call it a stutter second hand or whatever. Uh, that's just how this movement works. They say that it doesn't lose any time when you do that. But I don't know how that's possible. 
because the second hand doesn't move for two seconds. It doesn't advance two seconds, but everyone says it doesn't lose any time. Um, to me, I don't know how that's possible. Let's take a look and see how the second hands move one versus the other. My appearance in my eye is that the Orient Bambino is smoother, although they're both running at 21.6 megahertz. I, I don't know why the difference in the visuals. And a couple other things about the, the Bambino, just quick reference. You know, it has, a, it has a much nicer crown. It's not signed, but it's just nice. And look at the case. It's the, the machining on this case, compared to the machining on this case, is night and day. Oh, here's something important. I paid $124 for this brand new on Creation Watches. I paid exactly $250 for this direct from Timex. Honestly, if you take a value perspective looking at these two watches, and I know I've kind of been bashing this thing, but I'm, I'm just telling you what I, what I see. There's no question in my mind that this is more than twice a better value than this. This is double the price, and this is twice the watch. That makes this watch four times more valuable to me than this watch. That's my opinion. That's the final word on the, time, the new Timex Marlin $250 watch. Look, I, I paid the money expecting and wanting to be wowed, but from the minute I open the box until I wrap it up right after this review to send it back to Timex, I have not been wowed. I have been completely and totally underwhelmed. I haven't given this type of review to any watch yet. And I love Timex. I wore a Timex all day today. I still, I, you know, I, I have some of the more contemporary, I have the Weekender and, and uh, I forget what they call the other one. But I think overall, they completely missed the mark on this watch. It looks cool, I guess, but it doesn't look $250 cool to me. I don't know how it looks to you. Everyone make their own opinion, please. Um, this is just my opinion. I think if you have a lot of money and you just want to have this watch to say, hey, I have a Timex Marlin, just to say you have it in your collection, then fine. You know, that, that's a good reason to get it. If you're looking for value out of, a, out of a, a retro watch, there is absolutely no question that this is a better retro watch, first of all, it's, which is its intent, and it's a, a much, much, much better value. I forgot to mention that the hands do have some loom on them. I'm comparing this right now to the Timex Marlin on the left and a $49 Seiko 5 on the right. They were both charged for the exact amount of time. As you can see, they're both fading slightly and the Timex is fading very, very quickly. I would imagine be out of the picture here in about 15 minutes. So I do want to show another positive. It, this watch sits on the wrist very well. You see how, now I have a seven and a quarter, a little bit more than that wrist. Depends on what I ate today. And it looks great. Definitely not going to knock it for its general looks. But, you know, is anyone going to sit there and say, wow, what is that? Is that the new Timex Marlin? I don't know that anyone's gonna do that. So anyway, um, before we leave, I just wanna point out one more time that my subscribe button is right down there. Uh, my website is probably gonna be right up there, but it's watchtimela.com. I have an eBay store, which I'll flash on the screen here real quick. I sell you know, bunch of very inexpensive watches. I have a couple of uh, Timex electric ladies watches up there right now. If you just want to see what one looks like, they're very, very cheap. And, already, and they have working batteries. I mean, 
it's, it's a good deal if you just want to see what it looks like. I already sold off all of my men's Timex electric watches. As soon as I put them up, they sell. And I don't have any more to sell at the moment. If I do, of course, uh, I'll put them up on the site. So look, uh, if you have anybody you need a Christmas gift for, I had a garage sale today and all the junk that was in my garage didn't sell. But all the watches that I had on eBay, I sold one after the other after the other as people were coming up. So folks, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, again, please subscribe. Keeps me going. Keeps me wanting to do more. And if you ever have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave it below. I'm going to put a link to this guy uh, in case you want to buy it right to the Timex website where this thing lives. And uh, it's not on Amazon now, so I'm not going to give you an Amazon link, but I do have an Amazon link there where you would click on and you'll get uh, a whole bunch of watches maybe you never even considered before. So go ahead and click on that link and see if there's anything that you like. Well, until next time, I hope you enjoy the show and we'll talk to you soon.